Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sasquatch Out of the Shadows Live. Hope everyone is doing well. This is your host, as always, Alex Petikov. Hope everyone's having a great Monday night so far. We have a really exciting show for tonight. I am absolutely excited to, to talk about this and, and let you guys hear this stuff because, you know, without, I don't want to prime anybody right now. I apologize, but it's cool. I think we're going to listen to some awesome audio that when I heard initially was very intriguing. We'll put it at that. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But for those folks that are maybe just new or just tuning in, this is Sasquatch Out of the Shadows Live. We do a weekly live stream every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern talking about Sasquatch, Bigfoot, mystery hominids, and hominoids, as well as other cryptids and other mysterious things, usually mostly Bigfoot stuff, hence the name Sasquatch Out of the Shadows Live. But anyway, uh, that being said, we have this is show 93 or 94. I never know what number it is, but I know we're almost at 100. So that's really excited. About two years uh, in April since I started the show. So pretty excited to get to uh, show 100 soon here. So we'll have to do something special for that. But um, there's a playlist in the description below with information about what, checking out some of the older shows. I mean, obviously, there's a big archive of shows. So feel free to check that out. Subscribe and like if you like this kind of stuff. Leave me a comment. Let me know if I'm doing a terrible job or a great job or whatever, whatever you want to say, if, as long as it has no profanity, because that's going to get deleted. Uh, don't be a jerk. That's the moral of the story. There's enough of those online. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, so, yeah, this show is going to be great. But uh, last week we had an interesting show with Stacey Brown Jr. talking about Skunk Apes in Florida. I thought it was a pretty interesting discussion. Next week's show is going to be really interesting. We're going to be talking about... Uh, using d mapping data for Bigfoot. So we're going to be having on Scott of the Bigfoot Mapping Project, who's a really awesome dude, has a great website called the Bigfoot Mapping Project. I think that's the name of the website. I will have it linked next week, and we'll talk about using GIS data, mapping sightings from databases. We've used them on our Beyond the Trail expeditions. They've been a lot of fun to use. So um, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be visual, I think, uh, you know, in terms of bringing out visuals with maps. It's going to be quite informative. I'm excited for that. Uh, I do want to just take this moment to say hello to everyone in the chat. We've got Brent, the tall ones. What's going on, man? As well as my eyes, the Pharmacy Seeds Network. How's it going? I'm going to start shouting out people at the beginning of the show. It just makes more sense than doing it midway through the show. New Hampshire Sasquatch, what's up, man? He says, hello, everyone. And hey, Alex, definitely been looking forward to this one. Me too. Ever since we talked about it, we had Tristan on last month and talked about it. We've got uh, Kevin Hamilton. How's it going? Michael Smith, welcome. Brian and Chewy Go Hiking. What's up, Brian? Says, hey, folks, hope everyone is having a good evening. Absolutely. Ryan Carboy, Peggy Curtis. Hey there. We've got, uh, let's see, Nikki from Harry Man Hoaxes and Hoodwinks. How's it going? Yes, welcome. Uh, Stevie B says, hello, everyone. We've got Jeremiah, good old Jeremiah. Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah and almost said that Jeremiah Byron of the Bigfoot Society. What is up, dude? And hate everyone else now that I'm missing in the chats. Carol Barrett. We've got uh, Lone Wolf Jackson. Hi, Alex. Hope you're having a great week. Yeah, definitely. You as well. And hate everybody else popping in and who will be watching the show. Just wanted to say hey to folks. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about tonight's show before we bring our guest in here. Uh, we're going to be discussing... This really strange audio out of Washington State. Uh, this is, uh, the guest is Tristan Yolton, as it obviously says in the title there or in the description below. Uh, and he was actually, I had him on just last month, and we talked about some of those really strange audio uh, recordings that he has, some footprint stuff as well. So we're going to be listening to uh, something I didn't have a chance to check out at the time when I had him on. And it's this full, I think, 30-plus minute audio of just absolutely very weird noises. I mean, you, you guys can judge for yourselves entirely, and we're going to let you listen to the whole thing. Uh, it's not the full 30 minutes. It's cut down to like 16 or so minutes, which is, the I guess, the, the most interesting stuff out of that audio. And I'll let Tristan fully explain everything about that. So I think without further ado, let's just bring Tristan right in. Hi, Alex. How's good it see going? You. Yeah, welcome, you. welcome back, man. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Awesome. Yeah. So obviously um, we've been in communication mm -hmm. uh, poorly because I, I feel like I never answer because my Facebook just gets bad. So I apologize for that. But uh, <laughs> we've been obviously talking behind the scenes about setting this up. And mm -hmm. uh, when I heard that audio initially, um, after I had you on the first time, I thought it was really interesting. And I wanted people to hear that. And you were obviously willing to, to share it. So 
Sure. Uh, I think, you know, we were originally going to have Jay Birch on as well. He couldn't make it tonight. So um, either way, hope you're doing well, Jay, but uh, couldn't have Jay on because he was going to help also kind of set the scene. Uh, he's been to Bumping Lake, but I want you to mm -hmm. kind of fully explain for folks what exactly we're about to listen to and kind of the circumstances behind it and that sort of thing. Um, so like the floor is basically yours. Ask, ask away. And if folks have any questions about that, go ahead. And then we'll obviously, if you have questions, um, you can leave them in the comments and I'll gather them while we're listening. Cause we're going to listen to that full audio, but go ahead. Um, Tristan, what, what, what are we about to listen to? Okay. So uh, this was taken in July, 2020 at a place called California camp. I said rock camp mistakenly on your last show, but this, this, this particular, this particular audio was taken at a place called California camp, Gotcha. Uh, which is about a, a mile away from rock camp. Uh, it's, it's, it's before rock camp. It's a mile right. away from it. Uh, and it was just me and my mother at this campsite. We were up on this little hill. It, it, the campsite kind of slopes up a little bit of a hill. And we, we drove my mother's truck up there and we camped, we pitched a tent up there and we, uh, we, we camped up there, and I had this Tascam recorder on my mother's truck, which was about 20, 20 feet away or so from our tent, and this was just running on the top of her truck. And at 2 in the morning, while we were sleeping in the tent, all of a sudden, these crazy sounds started going off. I can't tell you which direction it was, but it was behind us. It might have been, it might have been coming from the lake that was behind us, or it might have been coming from this place called Malaria Meadows, which is a swampy area um, on the other side of the road, far back in the swamp area, basically behind California camp. And actually Dave Ellis has gotten audio from there before. That's actually is one of his camp areas there. But um, again, I'm not, I'm not completely sure where they were coming from, but they were, they were loud enough for me to hear. And, and they're just unbelievably, unbelievably loud. Like that, the audio, I had to bump up the audio because this guy didn't really do it justice. And um, and when those and this was at two two a.m. in the morning, and uh, I sat there and listened to them for a little bit, and then I tried to wake my mother up because she, her hearing is not the best. I will I will say that her hearing is not the best. And in fact, uh, when I tried to wake her up, I I said, "Can you hear these?" And unfortunately, she said no. Mm. So I, I kind of got a little bit frustrated and she and I were kind of talking about what, talking about that. I was like, you can't really hear that really. You know I mean? Uh, I was just a little bit frustrated with her. I'm not, I wasn't mad or anything, but I was just a little right. bit frustrated that she couldn't hear what I was hearing in that moment. Cause it was, it was, <laughs> it was quite the experience. So, um, so what happened was I took those, I tried to take those parts of, um, I tried to take those talking parts out of this audio and right. just try to concentrate on the vocals that were going on. So sure. you're going to have some hard cuts in the audio. It's going to be kind of chopped up in places, but that's just because I tried to take out the talking parts between me and right. my mother. And yeah, just, and, and, yeah, and to be fair, you offered to play the full 30 minutes of audio. Yeah. And, and, I, and you know, I think we both agreed that it's probably just better to do this so we don't – we just focus on those sounds because I think we're going to – like we're going to play the entire thing, the entire 16 minutes. You know, even though it is cut up, there's yeah. not going to be us – interjecting or talking it's just going to be the full thing and then we'll discuss afterwards yeah that sounds good yeah yeah just for those who don't know this went on for like 30 minutes straight basically uh which is something i've never heard it ever in terms of audio you know, like purported sasquatch recordings i've never heard of anything go on this long and for the record for everybody i'm not claiming these sounds to be a sasquatch i have no idea what made them um but i don't I don't know. I don't, I don't think they might, I don't think they were call blasting, but again, I, I didn't see who made these sounds. So who knows, but yeah. I've never heard anything like it before in my life. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's I, very, it's very weird. I mean, whatever it, it is, it's very unusual, weird. very unusual. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and also David Ellis has told me that he's recorded similar audio sounds from this area. So, um, I'm just saying like these kind of sounds being heard at Bumpy Lake probably is not totally out the norm. Sure. So um, David, might, be a for rarity, folks, might be a rarity, but not a norm, you know, not, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, I guess. These sure. Guys. Yeah. No. And for folks that might not be familiar, David Ellis is of the Olympic project. He's kind of their audio guy along with Chris Spencer. Um, mm -hmm. I think they, I think they both do really good audio analysis. Like they've spent time in the trenches, so to speak, listening to that David, especially, uh, you know, and I've, 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 I've worked with other audio that David has worked on and, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's there's he does a good job of cleaning stuff up. So 
Uh, but again, going back to Bumping Lake, I mean, we talked about it on the last show, some of that audio we played last show, which I will put a link to that show in the description of folks that maybe are listening to this afterwards want to hear the first part when we had Tristan on. Um, I'll, I'll link that in the description below. But um, yeah, Bumping Lake, I guess, seems to have a reputation for Sasquatch stories. I mean, I've had Shelly Covington, Montana on as well, and she talked about having a very strange experience at one of these camps at Bumping Lake. So Mm -hmm. definitely an unusual place but um very yeah anything else you want to add before we get into it well for those who don't know about bumping lake it's it's a lake that's pretty high up in elevation it's close to mount um mount rainier uh you have, it takes to get to this campsite it takes like an hour or so to get back in there it's i mean it's not like right off the road you have to drive back pretty far in and this is this is out this is out in the primitive campsite wooded area back in there it's not right by the lake you have to it's pretty far back in there, and uh, there's actually a bumping road, a bumpy road that you have to go on to get back to this, to get back to these campsites. So, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's very, I mean, once you get back in these wooded areas, it's like it's perfect habitat for these guys if they're if that's what's going on here. So, and and like you said, it is it is a popular place for bigfooters. I mean, they, they've been coming, bigfooters have been going to this place like off and on. So it's, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I've definitely heard these stories. Well, all right. I mean, if that's all um, you have for now, let's, I'd say we roll the tape and, and let people listen, and then we can discuss it afterwards. How does that sound? That sounds good. Yeah, and just, again, like, I've chopped this thing up. I've tried to clear out. I've even tried to get out some negative space in between some of the sounds, so. Yeah, so it's nothing, like, there was nothing going on. Yep. Yeah. Yep, so yeah, yeah. we have that on the record. People know exactly what to expect, and we'll talk, we'll say that afterwards as well. Okay. Uh, that you know the cuts and all that stuff just so it's abundantly clear to people that that is exactly what is is being played so right all righty well uh i guess what i'll do is i mean i'm going to keep you on screen but you can just turn your mic and camera off or, or keep it camera on whatever i'm going to probably turn my camera off and gather some yeah, of the I'll other clips so yeah okay. so I, i'm going to mute it too just so we, <laughs> no one's like oh my god but uh <laughs> yeah, awesome though, yeah. all right so Again, guys, here we go. We're about to play this full 16-minute audio. It's about, oh, what, 16, second, 16 minutes, 15 seconds or something like that. So once we're done, we will um, we'll come back and discuss. So all righty, guys. See you soon.
you get one on the table. Thank you.
All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah. That I also want, I want to mention something. Weird. Um, there was some noises going on outside our tent during this. Um, you might have heard some clacking, which might have. We had some lawn chairs out in front of our tent, and um, I think something was messing with those while these sounds were going on. Um, what are, what that could be, I don't know. But there's also, I'm sure people heard some possible voices. Um, during this, close to the audio, I don't know who those voices were. I don't know if it's me, and my mom, but some of those voices sounded, they didn't sound like a human language to me. So I'll just leave it up at that. But um, I don't think, we, I don't think my mom and I were alone um, in, in, the, in the tent uh, at the campsite. So hmm. I'll leave that up for interpretation, but I, I don't know what was going on outside, but I think something was messing, messing with our lawn chairs. Wow. Yeah, it's man. I don't even know where to begin. Um, yeah. So uh, I see there's obviously people that tuned in either a little late or halfway through. So this was again to reiterate. This is from Bumping Lake, Washington State. So that's where the audio is from for folks that are curious. I tried. I was answering a few questions towards the beginning, but then I just wanted to kind of listen. Um, sure. I don't. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's very disturbing. I mean, I, I think I responded to Joe Western Bigfoot um, in the in the comments there. <laughs> if that's a group of humans, I do not want to run into people doing that. No. Whatever's doing why, why that, I don't. I wouldn't minutes. want to run into it. I don't understand why they would do that for thirty minutes. So it's like that's very, it's even if very it's call bizarre. blast, they didn't even really stop. If it was call blasting, they didn't even stop in really in between. You know, for no. a response, they just kept going and going and going. So. And what is that audio? I've never heard anything like that. I've never heard of... anything either like it. So if somebody was out there making those sounds, I, I have no idea. Um, it's This is not a hoax. I was not involved in this. This is just, stuff, this is just something I captured on this task cam here on my mother's truck. And these were going off at 2 a.m. in the morning. So there's a lot of there's a lot of questions. Uh, there's there's just so many. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I really don't know what to say. I'd love to have somebody that, you know, maybe has heard something like this. So let me know. Um, Mike Casey here says so loud. I don't know if humans voices can carry like that. Can they? That's the one thing. There's some parts that get so incredibly loud. It sounds yeah. super close when if you hear most of it, it sounds pretty distant compared to where the audio recorder is. And I'm certainly no audio expert or anything along those lines. I mean, I just have a little bit of work. Yeah listening to spectrogram and trying to listen for knocks and that kind of stuff. But 
I don't know. I mean, obviously, there was a couple of times where we heard you guys talking. Possibly, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, I tried that, to keep those down, but it's, it's tough to do. Oh, yeah. It's hard to do when you're talking. I mean, which is fine. But that just, you know, kind of shows you how close you guys were in relation to the um, right. to the audio. And some of it. Yeah, this picks it up really well. <sighs> some of it got. It almost like was metallic in nature, like it had a right. weird metal. And then I'm just giving my initial impressions, and then oh, yeah. no, you can I agree. discuss as I much. Agree. Um, and if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, throw them in all caps. I know there's a lot. I was kind of skimming through earlier. People are saying, well, you know, I would say coyotes, but I don't think they go that low. I saw that one. It was one of the comments. Uh, New Hampshire Sasquatch here says the lung capacity of these creatures are nuts. Can't just be a human with both the volume and the length of these vocals. I don't know. I mean, maybe Sasquatch choir. Um, there, there, was an, there was an interesting comment. Somebody said Gregorian. Yeah, here we go. Upper Upper Canada Sasquatch says Gregorian Bigfoot. So for folks that don't know, if you've ever heard of Gregorian chanting, it's a uh, like a type of uh, singing. It's a ch like ch old church hymns and these kinds mm. of epic. I, I listen to it when I want to get like just an epic feeling because they're really amazing. A lot of Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox. Um, music is kind of similar in, in the way that it's that singing going. So uh, the lung capacity, again, whatever it is, it's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. But in you're right about the metallic thing. It kind of sounds metallic in some places. Like I think, yeah, there's was... using some kind of microphone, but I mean, again, like who the hell is doing that, you know, constantly like that, like your voice cord, your vocal cord would be fucking blown out basically, you know, doing that. Which is just bizarre. I mean, like if, if people are doing that, that's weird too. And again, yeah. I think there was one comment, it might have been Kevin Hamilton or somebody had said yeah, at so certain parts it almost sounds like a dirt bike getting closer and then going further away. Yeah. Um, so I mean I, I I don't know. I haven't been around enough of that in the woods in that kind of condition to hear that. But yeah, I don't know if I, that, I, I really Joe don't, says monks. I don't know if that know. was moving. I don't I have no idea if those things were moving or if they were in one place doing that. Um, so it's incredibly loud just to hear it in person. Like, I, again, that's why I was always surprised that my mother couldn't hear it because it was so loud. Would like to hear it a few <laughs> times. Uh, yeah, I think what we can do after we have some other stuff to discuss, too, but we can play it sure. again. I mean, I don't know if, if we want to stick around for it or not. I mean, I'm, I'm open to it, but I mean, I guess I'll have to. If, if you like leave and I just play the audio, that's fine. We can do that again towards the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine staying. Totally. I mean, that's totally fine with me. Just, yeah, stay so, till the end, I guess. Sure. Yeah, it's it's just when you talk about the other animals that it could be. I mean, obviously in, in Bumping Lake area, and I don't know, you have to tell me if, if I'm right on this, but I think it's, you know, like you've got your coyotes. You guys have some sort of wolf in that area as well. I Honestly, man, I have no idea about wolf. Um I know, I know there's rumors of wolves in certain parts of Washington. Yeah, but right. I can't tell you. I can't tell you if they're up in the Pumping Lake area. That's not sure. I have no idea. Uh, there's so, definitely elk. There's elk up there, but to me, right. that didn't sound like elk. Uh, I mean, elk bugling. Yeah, that's, I mean, I've, I've, heard, I've heard, heard that at Pumping Lake, and that's definitely not what I'm hearing on this. Well, if people want, they can go and search uh, right now. Go look up elk bugles. Go look up crazy coyote calls on YouTube or one of these yeah. sound databases. Try and get a comparison because I can't find anything that that like matches that type of sound. I, I just don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's very not, bizarre. There is a part in the audio. I don't know if anybody heard that might've sounded like a, a deer and like a, a deer call. It went, it, it was a really short thing. Yeah. It might've been a deer responding to that, but that's all. It, I mean, other than that, that's all I could hear possibly a, an animal that I could identify. I, all the other sounds though, I don't. And like I mentioned on your other show, there's like that whoop howl that you hear from the Snohomish score recordings in that thing. So that's, you know, that whoop. Yeah, there were some parts where it goes so incredibly high, or, or I should say loud. Um, misguided Angel asks, where can we hear these vocals? So if you rewind about 20 minutes at this point is when we start playing those vocals. And we'll play them again towards the end, but it's like the full 16-minute clip. Um, yeah. So let's see. We've got some uh, JP Merrick says maybe pre-recorded screechy. Ask Tristan if they were live. What does that mean? Uh, they were live and I recorded it. The, none of this, as far as I'm, again, I'm, I'm the, this is not a hoax. So he was, you were, I think what he means is were you recording this while on some kind of a live, like if you're alive on, 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 one of these programs. No, I was just. And which, I mean, no, you're in an area that does. I'm assuming there's no service out there, right? No, I don't know. no, no, yeah. silver. No, I was not live or anything like that. It's just me and my mom were in our tent sleeping. And I had this guy recording on my mother's truck. That was basically it. Um, no 
No, there's no self, no cell service out there where I am. I, it's no, no, no kind of internet service or anything like that. So. so here's a comment from Stevie B who says, sounded like something down in a cannon with sound bouncing around the walls or holler. I mean, these guys oh. might have been at the lake because I know there's, I mean, you know, we find a lot of footprints at the lake. And again, I'm not saying they're big footprints, but they're odd prints. So maybe if these were Sasquatch, they might have been congregated at the at the lake or maybe in other parts around the lake too maybe there's been maybe this you know little groups around calling to each other i don't know so um, tate says i'm late i can't believe you started without me ultra rude <laughs> okay tate well, um all right so, alive, so let's get some questions because I, I know there's a lot i'm gonna try and get them guys please if, yeah, you can sure. put them, if you can put them in all caps that would be really helpful i know there's a few um i'm gonna just kind of go through and see the first one that was in all caps. Oh gosh, where'd it go now? Okay, uh, Fruit Loops film. Fruit Loop films asked, "Does anyone know why howler monkeys vocalize like that?" Uh, so, if anyone knows anything about howler monkeys, I don't know if that's comparable to howler monkeys. Maybe uh, I saw some comments about that earlier. I don't know. I don't know why they vocalize, and I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a territorial thing. Maybe it's a mating thing. Who knows? Yeah. I'm not an expert at. The holler monkey, so I, I can't. Sure, well, I've heard I've heard other people with uh, you know supposed Sasquatch vocalizations that have said it sounded like a howler monkey, yeah. or that have heard a howler monkey. You know, can kind of say, well, that that's it's a lot deeper. I've heard howler monkeys, in, in, in like a zoo, and they sound a lot more. They're you know they're they're a big monkey. I mean, they're not right. gorilla size, but they are their sound they produce is actually incredible considering how small they are. They're smaller oh, than sure. humans, so. Yeah. Uh, my eyes says it would be great to see this on audacity to see the measurements. Um, yeah. I mean, if you threw that into a spectrogram, spectral analysis, you'd see some of those parts just absolutely bouncing up and down. Yeah. Um, totally absolutely. going, totally going crazy. Absolutely. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> Very weird. Um, so we got Mogi on monster. What's going on? It says, is the sound coming from the lake area? It's pot. I mean, it, it, the lake is behind us where we were and it's very possible. That's why I mentioned that it could be coming from the lake, but again, I can't verify that, but it's possible. So sure. is it that you, you, where you guys were in your camp, basically you had the lake behind you and then the, what well, would have been on the other side? Woods just was okay. on the other side of us in the mountainside. Oh, it's so, so it, does it start going up? Yeah, it starts. Yeah, it's just woods, and then um, there's a mountainside um, on the other side of the camp. There, there's like no, there's no other roads or anything like that. So, yeah, the lake in our in our position, the lake would have been behind our camp, like way off to the. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think here. Northeast, I would say, from from where we were camped. So, um, and it's totally different. I'm basically what I'm saying is like a totally different direction way down there i mean the lake is not right by the campsite you have to drive back the other way to the, to get to the lake yeah. um, so now let me ask you when you guys were going in there did you notice anybody else i mean i don't i, I don't know the layout of course i mean when you're driving into this camp do you pass through other camps or do you pass by other areas where there might be people yeah there was probably at one camp i think there was somebody camped um on the other side of us, but they weren't like, I mean, the, the kind of vocals that we were hearing, man, like, I don't think it came from this campsite. This must've been coming from, if they, if they came from this campsite, those vocals would have been a hell of a lot more clear and not sound of far away sounding. So. Interesting. Um, and you said, yeah, this, went, you said this I was summer. Say these came from this campsite. Absolutely not. And this was July of 2020, right? July 17th. Yeah. July 17th of 2020. So that was kind of during the height of COVID when, you know, I noticed that year when I, when I went camping and I went to areas that are normally pretty packed, there wasn't as many people out in the woods. I don't know if you noticed that in Washington or not, or if there was more, because a lot of people were kind of scared to get yeah. out. Yeah. So I don't know. Just, uh, so. just asking. Yeah. Um, all right, so Joe says, just to play devil's advocate, the metallic sounds remind me of distorted speakers. 
It could be. I mean, Fair I don't. Enough. I wasn't there to see who did it, so it could be. I agree. I I, I totally agree that some of it sounds metallic and speak alike. Um, it's very weird. Like, did somebody have a? Did somebody have a micro? Uh, you know, a megaphone or a microphone doing this? I don't. Karaoke know. night. Karaoke night for the Sasquatch. I don't know. <laughs> so weird. I don't. It's again, just, like, why again. Would somebody, why would somebody do that so constantly for like thirty minutes straight like that? Just, I know that that's I, that, that's what I said in the comments to Joe. I said if I if there was a group of people doing it out there, I wouldn't want to run into those people because. That no. is, I've run into enough weirdos out in the woods uh, when bigfooting. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Judy has a really good question here. Actually, she says, uh, "Was this on top of a high level mountain range?" Just wondering what the moon stage also. I don't. Be- I, I don't know the elevation of it, man. But it's 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 up above Chinook Pass. It's if anybody knows that area, it's up above Chinook Pass. It's a high mm-hmm. elevation. Very high elevation to get up there. And it's also, a good question, though. Well, yeah, it is a good question. If like, anybody in the chat, I mean, knows how to look it up. Uh, I mean, I could look it up now, but I'm, yeah. I'm trying to stay on topic here. But look up the moon cycles. You have the date, July seventeenth, twenty twenty. Go look it up um, and let us know if you if you if someone does Google that and find it, put yeah. it in the comments, and we'll bring it up because I'm I'm curious too. Yeah, and honestly, I don't remember what the moon was like that night. It, it could have been cloudy for all I know, but I honestly, man, I didn't pay attention to that. I don't remember. But maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe it has something to do with the moon. I don't know. Cindy be. says, "Thank you, Tristan, for sharing." Did you sleep? I did. I honestly, I didn't really sleep for a while after that, and obviously, I couldn't sleep during that. <laughs> so. My mom yeah. did apparently, but I didn't. I just yeah. I think she was in the chat earlier. I I, I believe I saw her in the chat a little oh, okay. while ago. I don't so have the chat up. Cool. I'm just so. Oh yeah, I think if you if you click, you may be on the private chat. If you go to comments, you should be able to see it. I don't know if it shows up on oh, your okay. screen or not. Okay, yeah, because yeah. there's like that that icon. Because it has it puts Got guests. It. So now you can yeah you can see what's going on in the chat too. Um, so cool. Tate says honestly, Tristan, this audio gives me chills. Really want to hear something like that someday. Yeah, and I, you know, this is going off at two a.m. in the morning, and uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure th- I'm sure this there was other campers that heard this. There must have been, and but again, like. Be curious to talk to know. them. Like, what did they think of this? I, yeah, I if even checked else... BFRO. I didn't see a report on BFRO about this, and I know there's been reports from sure. Bumping Lake on there before. So I don't know. I, right. I really don't know what to tell you. I, I have no idea what made these sounds. Um, Joe says the function of howling is thought to relate to intergroup spacing and territory protection, as well as possibly to mate guarding. Something to consider is interesting. I don't know. That's probably why howler monkeys and those kind of creatures do that sort of thing. Oh, great. We have Chris Spencer in the chat. Oh, good. So Chris says, I'm going to say this was visually analyzed and what I see in it does not match up visually with the known suspects. The audio and spectrogram was biological and not played recordings. Okay. So there, that answers, I believe, one of the questions from earlier. And cool. I talked about Chris earlier, you know, him and David Ellis. Uh, I, I personally think they do some great audio work. Um, they're definitely, you know, a lot more well, uh, you know, well versed with analyzing just audio in general. You know, uh, when it comes to just strange audio in the woods, uh, much better than than I am, for sure. Uh, Francisco Soto Cruz says there is a YouTube channel called named Driftless with similar sounds. Check it out. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, let's. Yeah, uh, we'll have to look that up afterwards. Um, Chris also says I'll also add. Some of the howls go 12 seconds. That's a long time for a human to do repeatedly without blowing out their voice box. Listening to it doesn't do it justice. Yeah, that's he's probably right. I mean, and that's uh, back to that comment from earlier about putting it in, in audacity, putting in a spectrogram mm-hmm. analysis where you can see just how sustained it is. I mean, that, some of those parts, yeah, it went, it was so sustained and loud. It just, when I initially heard it, I was just floored. I was just kind of like, right. I mean, there's something really weird going on here and I, I'm not going to claim what it is. I mean, I right. don't know what it is, obviously. Mm-hmm, um, sure. yep. uh, so rocket rock height man says, did anything happen to initiate this or did it just randomly start? Randomly start. I mean, there, I think there was like a, a short little vocal before that. And then all of a sudden I just, even on the recording, I mean, all of a sudden these things just go, um, you hear the whoop howl first go off and then, you know, then it crescendos into the, I think I think those might be possible um, juvenile vocals along with female vocals. This is my personal opinion, um, but yeah, it just all of a sudden just pops off and goes off, and yeah. And, and Kevin Kevin Carney, uh, he I've been the bumping lake with him for uh, a few times, and so he knows the area pretty well. He's in the hey, chat there. Kevin, I was Carney. in the chat too. 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah, New Hampshire Sasquatch also asked what was moon phase and weather when recorded. So we'll, we'll we're going to look up moon remember. stuff. But uh, do you know? Do you remember the weather? I don't remember the weather. It wasn't rainy. I know that. Gotcha. Um, might have been cloudy at the most, but it wasn't rainy or anything like that. And it gets obviously it gets pretty hot up there in July, so maybe maybe it was kind of clear. I don't know. I don't remember those kind. Of, I I wish I remember those kind of details, but I just don't remember it. It's kind of a blur, to be honest. Gotcha. Yeah, but maybe yeah, maybe the moon had something to do with it. I have no idea. Cool. So I I just uh, Chris also says it was not call blasted. Once again, in spectrogram, it visually is biological and not a device call blasting that would be easily seen in spectrogram. And that's something that you know you have to know. You have to kind of learn to be able to differentiate. I don't know if I'd be able to tell that, you know, based on my limited knowledge of spectrogram, where somebody like Chris, who really has spent time on it, or yeah. other, you know, people who have done a lot of audio, probably be able to tell. Um, uh, so here, yeah, Kevin Carney. So that's what you're talking about. He says, Tristan, great interview. Elevation of the campsite is 3,400. We met up at Tristan's camp the next day. So this was the day after that he met up with you. Um, no, Tristan's camp the next day. Uh, yeah, I guess we, I, I honestly don't. I guess we did. I It's been a while, man. But uh, it, it was just me and my mother in camp at the time when this happened. So, um, yeah. Yeah. He said, and he also says remote campsite more than a mile from the next remote campsite. Yeah. Um, it, so where, where, where we usually camp with him is at Rock Camp, which is a mile away. Yeah. And that's why I wanted, and that's why Jay was going to come on because he was there, I, I guess, around the same time or he had met you around that same time. He met me in June of 2021. Okay, I mean, so but I mean, I'm a year later after this. He he goes to he goes to that area a fair amount, at least from what he's told me. So, okay. but yeah, definitely interesting. Um, Mogian Monster says it almost sounded like a gaggle of geese. Don't laugh. A large flock of geese can make a racket at an echo. Maybe. Uh, I'm I mean, not gonna laugh. I mean, 2 a.m. in the morning. I I don't know, man. That's that's tough yeah. To say. No, it's a, I think it's a fair point. Um, but uh, definitely, definitely interesting. Um, yeah, just got to consider all the possibilities. I sure. Suppose. No, that's that's totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so Joe here says, looks like moon phase was waxing. Full moon was 24. I'm assuming 24th of that month. 24th, okay. Yep. Okay. Interesting. So thank you, Joe, for doing that. Thank um, yeah, thanks for looking that up. Well, it's it's, it's important. I mean, you know, stuff yeah. like that, We it's cool because you can actually look it up now that we know what it was like and what the conditions would have been like. Um, so Stevie B says, did the sound wake you up or were you already awake? It, it woke me up out of sleep. Yeah. Because there was like nothing going on before 2 a.m. And, and as soon as that started, I, I woke up from it. It woke me up from it. So yeah, I was not awake during that time. I mean, before that happened, I wasn't awake. Nope. I was sleeping. Trying to right sleep. <laughs> yeah. It does get pretty hot up there in, in the summer though, so um, just keep that in mind too. It does get pretty hot and mosquitoes are terrible. Yeah. Terrible up there. Those... You can't sleep outside in a my mom and I actually tried to sleep in a in a truck there um, a year after that and it, the mosquitoes were so bad we had to go into we had to go into the truck sleep because we didn't want to pitch a tent um at, um at the second camp out that we went to so yeah i don't know i i don't know man it's just a crazy place and you know that those vocals were the only time i've captured something like that being a bumping lake all those other times i've never captured anything like that before that was completely new so mm. completely and out of the ordinary how many times have you been back there since then um i think once or you know, like I told you, like last year, they had the wildfires towards the end. Um, um, actually, after I think after I met Jay at Rock Camp, I think the fire, the wildfires this, happened. This past summer. This past summer, yes. Yeah. So I wasn't able to go back there uh, until after, you know, until October, um, when the wildfires, I guess, were, were pretty much taken out and not by October. Um, did it? But, did it? How close did it get to the lake, or was it sort of in that area? Uh, of the fire, yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, the wildfire is more on the ridge area. Um, that's why I was kind of worried about Rock Camp because I think the wildfire, and I know Kevin Kevin probably knows more information about the wildfire because he was keeping up with that. But uh, I don't think it reached the lake, but it definitely did reach. It re it did reach down into some of the wooden wooded areas down below from the mountains. So um, I mean, I remember being I remember piled up logs and charred 
there was charred, you know, trees and things like that. But I don't think it reached the lake, as far as I know. Uh, but I can't wait to get back there. I, I want to get back to this this year for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what I find interesting, uh, you know, with David saying that David Ellis saying that he's gotten some of stuff. And to me, the first thing that kind of not the first thing, but after I sort of listened to it for a little while, when I initially first heard it about a month ago when we were talking after the last show, because I hadn't had a chance to hear this before I had you on. Um, I listened to it afterwards based on our discussion after the show and um, just, you know, going through just kind of trying to figure out what it might be, but it reminded me a little bit of the audio that we have from uh, Oregon, from the Mount Hood area that this mm. past summer that uh, we've, I've talked about on the show when we had a recap, our buddy Ron Reed was camping in an area in the Mount Hood wilderness and got this melodic kind of singing weird vocal from out in, in the woods that he heard. Mm -hmm. um, and right. he showed it to Connor Anderson at uh, the North American Bigfoot Center, a Cliff's, Cliff Berrickman's Bigfoot Museum in, uh, in you know, outside of Portland near Mount Hood. And he showed him that audio during that trip. This was like July of 2021. Mm. Late. This was like late July of 2021, I believe. And mm. um, he, he showed Connor the audio, let him listen to it. And Connor thought it was really interesting because he had very similar audio that he recorded from about a mile away in that same area, but summer of 2019. So two years prior, same time of year, July, around that time, very similar audio. We have it in our one of our Beyond the Trail episodes. That's the only thing I can really say it kind of sounded like. Yeah. Weird. Um, I don't know. That just me personally but um but it's happening like those happen at a certain time it sounds like right like at a certain um certain month maybe or a certain time yeah it was, well that was weird about that particular one where it was it seemed to be at the same around the same time but um yeah so here we have a comment from kevin who says we've had a, a close encounter here in 2017 with a new moon tristan yeah. was in camp last spring when we had a full moon sighting 10 p.m moon phase doesn't seem to make a difference really oh interesting yeah, um, I didn't see. I, I know what he's talking about. I didn't see. I didn't see the sighting, but he saw it. He actually saw it um, run. He was actually checking us out at the campfire, apparently, and it. And there's actually scuff marks in the ground where he where he says where he saw it scamper off. But apparently, he was just standing there watching us, and we didn't even see it. But um, yeah. he saw it, and he and it's, he he said it scampered off into the woods there. And this was at rock camp, so yeah. I wish I saw it, but I didn't get to see it, unfortunately. It's interesting. Joe yeah. says, sorry, full moon was 23rd in July, so not the 24th. Okay, well, um, now we know either way. Um, Frederick Nolan says, vibes of frequencies of low register travel further in the ground. Oh, you mean from so where I would capture it, I guess? Like, I don't saying? know if that's a question or just a comment. I, uh, I'm not going to try to decipher it. If you want to clarify or something, uh, feel free to. Um, I don't know enough about that to, to really comment further, I guess. So, yeah, um, interesting. But well, maybe the velocity of, you know, maybe it was just so loud. Maybe it kind of rumbled towards. I mean, I didn't feel any rumbling or anything like that. But, uh, you know, like I didn't, it didn't shake anything or anything like that. Yeah. So, like, I can't comment on it. Well, do you want to, should we just play the audio now again? Do you, are you up for that? You want to do that? I, Sure. If, pe if people came in late, they want to hear it or. Yeah. I mean, we could do it again. We've been talking about it. What's that? Everyone play is fine with me, man. Like, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's just do it again. Let's, let's give people a chance to hear it again. And um, I don't know. Let's it's, it's, uh, it's either way. It's going to be interesting. So here we go, guys. We'll be, we'll be back then and again in about 16 minutes here.
All right, we're back. Okay, there we go. Uh, Interesting comments there. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so that just again, we played that for folks just so you can hear it for a second time, because uh, I don't think talking about it obviously does it justice. Um, yeah. So I just think it's interesting to hear it again. There's some things that I notice now. You know, after pay paying attention to certain things the first time, I notice now some of those parts where there was that increase in volume and there's some kind of grunting as well at some point. I don't know if that was maybe you guys sleeping or if you had been snoring or anything like that, or um, I know you said you weren't sleeping, but. No, I, I, I mean, I'm not the best at editing audio. So um, I tried to lower my mom and I's parts of talking, but there's actually some stuff in there I, that I left in that there's like kind of what you're talking about, that some grunts or some weird little, voices but i don't know if it was me or my mom because they didn't sound like an yeah. english language to me so i left those in the recording because like i mentioned earlier and like what my mom mentioned in the comment there um we thought there was some stuff going on outside or outside our tent at the same time this was go this was going on uh, we had mm -hmm. some lawn chairs out lawn some, we had some lawn chairs out in front of the tent and you can actually you can hear some something moving them or clacking with them i don't know what the heck was going on and um, I th and again, this was on my this record for those that were that weren't here that weren't here originally. I, I used this task cam recorder on my mother's truck to record those sounds. So that's the kind of microphone, you know, dual microphone on this. And and uh, I just had this on my mother's truck, uh, twenty feet away from our camp or from our tent, and you know, I captured those sounds. And I I I. I I amplified the sounds a little bit um, from here because these didn't capture, the, you know, these don't capture the best audio from far away, only up close. So, and also that audio clip is also edited down from 30 minutes for yeah. people who, who don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we, we've talked, we talked about that extensively at the beginning, just to be clear about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there might've been something outside our tent talking or making some grunt noises. I have no idea what some of those were. Um, you know, there's something that goes, burr, 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 and I don't know. I don't think that was me uh, in the tent there. So um, yeah, definitely something I have interesting. No idea. I mean, whatever it is, it's one of the freakiest types of audio. I don't care what it is. That's for me. It's just freaky out there. I mean, and I'm not yeah. saying it's Bigfoot. No, maybe, Obviously, I can't maybe, confirm maybe. that. Can't deny no. it. Um, right. Mostly, just can't confirm. But just in general, like if I kind of keep going over that point, if that was a group of people, that's still very creepy and weird. And I don't know. Very weird. I mean, people do weird and creepy stuff, that's for sure. But yeah, like that's not the kind of people down, I want right? to run to. You, you, What's you that? Saw that? Like what you saw in Oregon with those guys with torches? Yeah. 
Satanists. Satanist, I mean, where is Satan? And, the and Green Florida Swamp in Florida. We, yeah, we saw those weird. That's going to be in our Beyond the Trail episode. The weird structure, Wiccan, Satanist type stuff that we found. Right. Um, and that, that's there's a history of that in that area. But yeah, so people do weird stuff, especially in the woods. They but do. Um, I do want to just take some comments and questions here. Uh, sure. Timmy Boy says, sounds like the wind coming down the mountain and through house here in El Paso, it freaks me out at night. So maybe that's something oh. that's interesting. I don't recall area. any wind going on during that night. Uh, and I, I don't think that's wind personally. No. no. But um, but yeah, maybe it, it, maybe in El Paso, I know there's a mountain or something might come down. Probably makes a weird yeah. noise. No, this was this was on the other side of the mountain. This was on the lake side. So um, that's Northwest what... Olympics says used to hear that at elk camp at night. Then I seen them one evening. Interesting. Is elk camp at uh, Bumping Lake? Or I'm not that... sure. I'm not sure what elk camp is. Maybe it's. Maybe it's in the Mount Rainier. It might be in the Mount Rainier range. I don't know if they want That's to clarify that. I don't know what. Yeah, is. I'd be I'd be curious to know um, about that. Maybe people have different names for these campsites. I don't know, but um, the one we were at was California Camp. Sure. Yeah. Uh, could code names. Um, Fruit Loop yeah. Film says random hypothesis. Could they be celebrating a good hunt or a kill? Probably not. But it's worth thinking about. I mean, there's just so many unknowns. I mean, you could think of anything, honestly. And like people are saying in the comments, like for an elusive creature like this, why are they making so much noise? Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I have no answer to, to that. Uh, maybe like what somebody suggested, maybe something, maybe there was a tra tragic event and these guys are mourning about it. I don't know. I have so, no much, so much unknown. Well, as Stevie so B unknown. says, wow, that's a lot of vocals at once. Yes, it is weird. I mean, it, it would have to be a group of something. It's if it's a group of people. It's a group of people doing that. I mean, it's not just one. Doesn't sound. It sounds like there's more than one individual, at least from what I can tell. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's why I was. My theory was maybe it could be juveniles and females, and maybe a male mixed in there, or it could be maybe little small pockets or uh, you know small little groups here and there, all vocalizing at once. So that could be what's going on too. Yeah, you know, like in different areas at the same time. That's possible. For sure. Francesca E says sounds alien to me. I've never heard what could be Sasquatch person just saying very unnerving. It is very unnerving. I, I can only imagine laying there at two in the morning trying to sleep and hearing that. Um, yeah, because, you know, when people think maybe of a Sasquatch vocalization, they think of something really low and deep and, you know, something like the Ohio howl or something like that. And when you hear like a like a, a like a female kind of voice or like maybe a child kind of voice screaming like that, that's just, you know, I don't think people expect that. And I sure as heck didn't expect to hear anything like that before. So um, here's that comment from Kevin. Kevin, he says, for a bunch of critters that supposedly try to go into text by people, this group sure is noisy. Bigfoot bachelor party. Just yeah. A good <laughs> the other thing, like again, like this bumpy lake is pretty far back in the woods there, so maybe they don't. Even though there's people that, even though there's people that camp there, maybe the Sasquatch, they don't really, they're not really phased by that. Because again, this is way out. It, this is about out in the wooded area, you know. So it's maybe they feel more comfortable um, vocalizing. Is what I'm trying to say. Maybe they're not as intimidated. 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 Uh, I, can't I mean, this, this spot, is seems like it's pretty known, uh, you know, from what I can tell in, in the Bigfoot circles. I mean, like I said, even yeah. before, before I knew from you and I've been told by others as well, that it's a pretty well-known Bigfooting spot. And I was talking about other, other people that have had encounters there. Um, so it's just strange. I mean, a lot of these places they get a lot of Bigfooters, right? Yeah. Typically there isn't a lot that comes out that's legit because of, I don't know if it's oversaturation or it is that effect of like different groups being in the same area. So whatever's going on there, I mean, there I seem to be idea. legit encounters. So I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's really weird. Yeah. Salvatore, and and, oh, and in the summertime, like that lake, I mean, it does, there, there is a lot of people on the lake during the summer, but not, Yeah. I don't think during those hours at 2 a.m. So um, I don't know. Why, I mean, I don't there know. There's a lot of people that heard it. That's what's crazy. That, that's what, that's what my, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, if that was going on, there has to be somebody else who, who experienced it that night. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know the layout, but I mean, what would people do if somebody, I feel like somebody would get annoyed by that and maybe go over and try and figure out what it is. I don't know. I mean, it's, if I heard that out camping anywhere, I would probably be a little freaked out and a little annoyed if it was, especially if it was coming from a group of people, but yeah. So I'm a little bit surprised. I've never seen a report on this or even anybody coming out with other audio other than, other than me right. out of that night. So I don't know. I have no, really no idea. Salvatore Bruno says sound coyote-ish too many howls 
I mean, I disagree. I think there's no yipping or anything like that. It exactly. Just I don't hear any yipping. Coyote. No, because nope. like the PL screamer, like you can hear yipping in that. But in yeah, that, I don't hear and that's that's all. pretty much known to be coyote at this point. Um, yeah. I think Tom, even even uh, people have said they've seen coyotes doing that very noise. Right. I don't yeah, know. The, the lack of a yip is, uh, I think, a, a big for, thing. For 16, you know, 30 minutes, condensed in 16 minutes worth of no yipping and nothing that's a dead giveaway for coyote. I mean, go outside and listen to some coyotes. I hear them a lot in my kind of research area. And, right. I mean, they could do these these howls and this kind of stuff, but there's always, you can immediately tell, I mean, the, the, when the coyote, you know, their, their chorus kind of a start, kind of starts. They're not, I don't know. I mean, I just don't think that's coyote. Yeah, this sounds more like a chorus, like what you're talking about. Like, um, I'm not saying a human, but a, you know, that kind of vocal track. So Brian, Brian says like whale calls singing is the closest I've heard this, but more eerie. That's yeah, definitely a weird one. Yeah. Like somebody mentioned on the other, on your past show, the St. Louis County, Minnesota recordings. If anybody's, if you guys haven't heard that, look that up. Um, I know um, Sasquatch Bioacoustic has that up on his web. Mon Monongahela, he has Monongahela, that. Monongahela, yeah. Um, I'm not saying they, that's what these are or what they sound like, but they are all. They sound like a whale, kind of a. They have like a whale kind of a sound to them. So if anybody's curious to hear something like that, um, St. Louis County, Minnesota, check that. Um, check those out. Definitely. Yeah. Salvatore Bruno also says, sounds like Tate's howl when he stubs his toe. Uh -huh. Oh, Tate was out there? Oh, man. <laughs> that explains it all. If you, if you saw a littering of PBRs and hot dog sticks oh, ran around, you know it, it was not a Sasquatch. You should have gone to the lake afterward to, to see. <laughs> That's a good see one. The evidence. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, Kevin here asked, Tristan, is that up close grunting you or a question mark? We kind of talked a little bit about that. Yeah, like there's some, like I said, there's some stuff that I left in there because I, I don't think it, I don't think it was me and my mom making those. There were some weird close-up sounds that might have been something else other than us. So I don't know. I don't know, Kevin. I really don't know if that's me or my mom, but I don't remember making some of those grunt noises. Uh, so I don't know. I really don't know what those are. But I left them in just because I thought they were interesting. And like I said, I thought there was something going on outside our tent as these were going off um, behind us. Yep, Brent, I yeah, agree. That's bizarre, Brent. Yep. Yeah, it Never really is. Before. I mean, I... And hearing these know. in person, man, like it just like even the audio doesn't do it justice. It's just incredible to hear. And you know, if you heard, if you listen to that original audio, you know, it's just you can hear me commenting and even cursing. Like, wow, <laughs> I was just so amazed um, as these were going on. Yeah, Kelly Abbottall, Abbottball. Sorry for mispronouncing that. Says, yeah, perhaps they lost one and they're looking for him or her. It could be, man. Maybe it's a morning thing. Maybe it's like a funeral kind of a thing. I don't know. Kevin followed up to that. Anything. He says, this is a very interesting and plausible theory. That would explain all the sustained howling and willingness to expose themselves. I, there's just so much unknown. I don't know. I mean, it, it is strange. I mean, there's yeah. really even some of those other, you know, supposed Sasquatch audio that's out there. It's in like something like the Ohio howl, if that's legit, which I don't know if it is, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's strange. Um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it sounds like it's one individual or it's just one thing going on at once, not a whole bunch of things in, especially in this sustained of a pattern. I mean, to go back to the thing, if this were humans, they have to have serious sets of vocals. Maybe there are, some singers or something they have the capability to go like that for half an hour i don't think i could sing and scream like that for half an hour um on the top of my lungs i mean we talked about that earlier chris had mentioned that you know that just seems pretty ridiculous for you know kind of human vocals to be going that that height i don't know if it was chris or somebody had mentioned something yeah like chris that. spencer i think did say that yeah yeah so uh, yeah. francesca yeah, unless somebody had microphones out in these big you know, speakers out there doing that. I have no idea, but I, I can't imagine anybody wanting to do something like that. It just doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Francesca says this also reminds you of the sirens of mythology, intriguing, but also terrifying. Yeah, I mean, yep. totally. Definitely sirens. Mm -hmm. Sirens. Uh, sirens sound like I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. That's getting Like I said, there's that whoop howl, kind of like what you hear in the Snohomish recordings, if you've ever heard that before. That very yeah. classic Sasquatch whoop howl. So, um, yeah. Pablo says i guess that lake was truly bumping that night Maybe that's where it got its name right i don't I really don't i don't know the origin but that that is fun yeah <laughs> and then ryan carboy says super random but i feel like i've heard similar sounds in the old tom cruise fantasy movie legend from back in the day creepy huh interesting and many years since i've seen it but 
Yeah. Maybe we have to go rewatch it. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so Joe asks, Tristan, has the audio been amplified? I did kind amplify of... this audio, yeah. yes, from the original. Yeah, sure. Because so, on, on this on this thing, like the any sounds that are far away, they don't come up as I don't know what the reason is, but they don't come in as well as it should. So I had to amplify it. The, the, any sounds that's close to these guys, you know, like my our voices, they come up pretty well. But anything far away, they don't catch it very well. So hmm. yes, okay. I did. I, I did have to amplify this clip. Yes, because and to be fair, he, you guys want to be able to hear it as well as you. Could. Yeah, you did offer to play the full thirty minutes. I don't know, unedited or yeah, I, yeah. So I just for the record. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I'm not hiding anything. Just. I didn't want people to hear, you know, me and my mom talking during it. I didn't think that was relevant. So, but I'm not hiding anything. <laughs> Smedley do right says maybe it was Talkman. Um, it, it could be honestly. If you I know what they sound like, it could be anything, man. Like any anything's up for speculation <laughs> or theory or yeah, who knows? Yeah, uh, who knows? It's weird, man. I don't Very know. Weird. But you know, my theory has been on on the lakes that maybe the juveniles frequent the juveniles and females maybe frequent the lakes. So maybe that's what you're hearing in the audio is male or male and females and juvies possibly at the same time. This is yeah. my this is my uh, speculation. I don't know for sure, but fair enough. Um, so Papa Craig says I've heard of howls like that in Oregon, in Northeast Oregon, many times in the last <laughs> fifty years. I'd be curious to hear some of that. I don't know if you have it recorded or anything like that. And then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If anybody has recordings like these, I'd love to hear it. In Definitely, I've never heard anything like this before. Ever. I'd be quite curious to hear that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brent says I recorded long screams for an over an hour from Coyotes. It's on Curious Cryptids channel. Yeah, go check it out. Go listen to long recordings of. Go listen to the Pialop Screamer, as they call it, right? Which is this yeah, long, long time considered to be Sasquatch, but most right. likely coyote uh, that's a lot of people still think of sasquatch but go check it out uh, yeah. francesca even asked does this match a coyote signature on the spectrograph i can't you know Never i'm works. just gonna say what chris said earlier he said it didn't match known suspects and he did a, an analysis of it so that's i'm not gonna yeah. speak for him or, or say anything i'm just gonna kind of say exactly what he said earlier because right. he commented earlier not gonna put words in his mouth yeah. um but um yeah and we've talked about the whole coyote thing so far yeah, I mean, people want to go listen to the Pialop Screamer or the Snohomish recordings from the 70s, go for it. I mean, there's stuff in there that, like I said, in the Snohomish recordings, there's stuff that sounds kind of like what's happening in here. So it's kind of neat to hear that again. I'm not saying it's a coyote, but I'm just saying there's sounds that yeah. sound similar in the Snohomish recordings from the 70s. Sure. So this is an interesting comment just from Flat Rock, who says, Frequency patterns is very important when determining vocals of canines and primates. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Probably yeah. on a spectrogram, yeah. Probably. Yeah, that, that would make sense for sure. I mean, right. I think uh, when it uh, when it comes to you know primates, you can actually tell individuals uh, based off of vocal signature. Right. Um, and I know I know that that they've done that in the past with like gorillas and chimps and that sort of thing in the wild, especially when tracking some of the more rare ones like the mountain gorillas in the uh, Virunga region of the Congo and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. right. Kelly Abib-Tall says, I'd like to hear it unamplified personally. I'm not asking you to do that, just saying. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, you, you, if people um, should reach out to you or not. Or Yeah, I mean, they can reach out to me, I guess, if they want to hear it unamplified. That's fine. Um, you just have to turn your volume up pretty well to hear it, but that's fine. I, again, I don't understand how this thing works, but it, that's why the bumpy sounds up. It's because you don't hear them as well in the original. So I just... But yeah, maybe um, you can you can contact me on Facebook at Tristan Yolton, and um, maybe I can provide you with that. Um, again, I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm just like I'm just trying to provide something for you guys to listen to. You know, I didn't want to. If I sent you the original audio the way it was, you wouldn't be able to hear those sounds as well for some reason. I don't. Again, maybe that's just the way this microphone is built. But. And again, you said that your mom did not was not able to hear those sounds when no, she was in she was in the tent. I mean, um, she her hearing is not the best, and but she couldn't even hear them, which really surprised me. And so, whatever it was, you think was distant enough that you know she wouldn't be able to hear, or just it it would sounded distant to you when you were there. It, it was definitely distant, but it was loud enough for me. I, again, like I, I'm just, I'm just surprised she couldn't hear it in the tent. But again, her hearing is not the best. Maybe it was not at an octave that she couldn't hear, or, or decibel that she couldn't hear. 
Um, but they sure. were far away. That I don't know. I really don't know, man. I I don't I don't understand why she couldn't hear it, but it was really loud to me. Like I I was just blown yeah. away. It well, pretty much uh, like almost what you guys just heard is pretty much what I pretty much heard. Yeah. Inside a tent, and that was just unbelievably loud. But honestly, it was probably even louder in person compared to that. So. It's, mm. It's just crazy. The vocal range of that thing was just crazy. Kevin yeah, the Umatilla. Yeah, that's look up one. Umatilla Screamer. I've mm. probably heard that, but I don't know much background about it. But it's interesting. Yeah, I think that was in New Mexico or something like that. Somebody captured um, some kind of. Bob, coyote Bob Craig says, sounds. "Kevin, I think the Umatilla Screamer is a fake. I don't. I don't know. I don't know either. I remember the guy. I remember the guy went out there with his cell phone and." He captured it as it was going. I mean, he didn't see it, but he captured the sounds as, as it was going on. So, yeah, you guys could probably YouTube you Matilla Screamer. Maybe it'll come up. Um, but it Tate, doesn't sound like these. This is totally different than that. Tate, I am ignoring you, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tate, you're not. laughing now. So you made you me laugh. You did a good job. Go. I'll give you that one, Tate. It, you I'll, fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't know well, how far it was, Kelly. I have no idea. It could have been coming from the lake. I don't know. Not more than a mile. Definitely more than a mile, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it it certainly is fascinating. I don't. I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you know what to make of it. What it is. What it isn't. Yeah. I mean, uh, all the times I've camped at Bumping Lake since 2015, that's the first I've ever heard anything like that. You know, I, I've captured screams and howls before, but nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So for something to go on for 30 minutes straight, basically like that with multiple individuals is something I've never encountered before. So uh, Grant, Grant Sill, hi, hey, Tristan and Alex, what kind of equipment to use, if I may ask? So Tristan's showing that recording, I use this DR05 task cam recorder, and I placed it on my mother's truck. And um, I, for those recordings, I use that. And others, I used, uh, well, I mean, I'm, again, just for that record, for that recording, I use this, and for other recordings, I use these little guys, these little digital recorders like Olympus, and there's a Sony one too. But mainly, so far, it's been this. Um, since since then, I've gotten um, a parabolic, and I will be using that um, coming up. And also, I got a better recorder than this recently, so hopefully, it'll capture better audio. Um, if I ever get anything like that again, hopefully. So, oh, yeah, well. basically this grant. I use this to get that audio. Um, this is mostly what I use. Uh, this is a um, nice Zoom H1N. It's basically the mini Zoom. There's the larger ones that are used for like filmmaking, media production. These ones are small. Right. I use them because I, I hook external mics up. But we when we do audio, we always have these either deployed outside of camp or, I mean, I'll usually hopefully run two, have one in the tent and then one somewhere off out of camp. But I like these things. You can get them for like 80 to 90 bucks on Amazon used or uh, used. And sometimes it'll be like package opened once or something. I think they mm -hmm. retail for around, I want to say like 110 to 120 new, yeah. something like that. So, and there's still older models that are, that are cheaper that are you know, like discontinued ones. If you can find them, the older H one ends that are a little bit cheaper and they work just as well. I mean, this one has a little bit more features now, but yeah. for the most basic stuff, I mean, I think they're, they, they, they get the job done. I actually record narration audio and a lot nice. of other stuff on here too. So that's why I have it on this little tripod. I'd speak into it and it's, it's sounds really good. So that's have you what used I a parabolic used. on that before. Yeah. I've used a parabolic oh, yeah. on here a few times, yeah. uh, but unfortunately it was not a, not a good parabolic. Both times I've mm -hmm. used a parabolic. It was like a one that you basically can get for like 30 bucks. It's like kind of, I don't I, I maybe consider it a kid's toy almost. It is a parabolic. It doesn't record. And it has like some, some of them have a built-in telescope. I wouldn't, I mean, I borrowed one from Carrick and then, with mm -hmm. STM, we've used one that's pretty much the same. Um, I'm not knocking those those parabolics. They're just there are better out there. But what we would do is we'd hook it up to the Zoom so we could record on there. Did you guys ever use something like this? That's the one. That's the one we yeah. use. Yep. That's the most basic one I think that you can get out there. It has like mm -hmm. a like a, not a telescope, a little monocular thing, right? And you can see through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a little scope thing. Yeah, the scope. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah. This thing in the back here. 
Yeah, so that's the one. That's the only one I've really had much experience with, and they don't record. Those things don't record on their own. So what you have to do is you hook them up onto here to uh, to be able to record. So that's what I've done, and I found you know they've been of limited use for this kind of thing. They're probably better for when you're just listening, but I mean then you don't have the capability to record, which kind of. I know, Excuse right? Like, you're you're just on the freaking trigger. And it, I know. So even on my recordings, the oh, one man. thing that's good about it is if I hear anything weird, I'll turn it on because it'll just be very d blank audio and then that turns on. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah. fair enough. Um, Grant Silk, he asked about the cost. Well, we we kind of said, you know. Uh, I don't know what the. I. I I said this game was given me. I really don't know how much these are going for, um, but I'm sure you can just easily look it up and find a good price. Hopefully, right on. So here's a question from Joe who asks: Can you hear sounds from the highway at that location? Uh, it's pretty far. I mean, that's pretty far from the highway. I would say no, um, unless there's a really loud muffler going on. But I don't. I mean, unless there's people going down the road there, but from the highway, I don't think so. So is, I'm looking kind of on a map. It's sort of like a national forest lake. Yeah. Or a road in that area. Here, let's do something. Well, cool it's like here. a, you know, it's a, where the campsite is, it's a back road. It's a dirt back road. It's like, it's not even paved. <laughs> it's got rocks and things in it. It's, it's just a dirt road. All right. I'm going to just quickly. Let's see, I'm gonna get into, share my screen. We're gonna go do some some looking at this right now. Cool. Show this location on Google Earth, because why not, right? No, this is this is the green swamp. I've been <laughs> looking at that, but let's see. What are we looking for? Uh, right. Bumping Lake, Washington. Let's, let's see where good old Google Earth takes us out of Florida, all the way up here. Okay. Nice. All right, so let's get an overhead view here. So we can see this is the lake in this area. Right. So you've got a lot of these. How sort big of, that is? That's a yeah, big you got a lot of mountains here. Obviously, mm -hmm. right up here in the background. Is this this is technically the Cascades, right? Or is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mount Rainier. There's Mount Rainier's right there. Yep. Wow. Okay. Mount Rainier's not too far away. Yep. That's cool. And then you've got camps in here. Right, and the ones next to the lake are not where we are. We're like way back in there, so. So you're, probably you looking at the, you're probably looking at the RV campsites, right? right are you there. talking like down in this area or? Uh, yeah, like if that's, a, I can't tell if that's the dirt road, but yeah, there's like a dirt road. And, Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's way back in there. Yeah, exactly. So it would be more like in here. Yeah. Somewhere in this area. Yeah, closer to the closer to the mountains over there. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So, I mean, you zoom out, you look at that. I'm trying to find where right. the. Is this this is a highway? Is this a highway here? Uh, if I believe 410 might be it's the highway 90. to pass. No, not I 90. That's way way over. Um, oh gosh! Oh, we just lost it. There we go. Chinook Pass is that? Would that be this? No, nope, that's that's a dry river. I can probably just look up Chinook yeah. Pass. There we go. So you go up Chinook Pass. I mean that that's one way we get up there. Chinook Pass. Okay. You follow that. Um, wow, that must, that must be a scenic. Look at that road. Yep, that must be scenic. a fun drive out there. Holy moly! Yep, so all that's the highway the there. there. And then Bumping Lake is where there's a turn off from there to Bumping Lake. Yeah. Oh, so here. Okay, so this basically that sound would have to travel from if you're over in this area from all the way over here to there, huh? Yeah, if you want to hear the. Highway. <laughs> I can't hear the highway from there. I don't know how that would how that would work. At least from the campsite, I can't hear it. Here's some pictures for folks. Yeah, wow. the snow again. <laughs> this is why. Yeah, like I told you, this is why they close it because the snow gets crazy up there. I bet that looks it's very squatchy. So. Oh man, that looks incredible. And you, a good view of Mount Rainier as you're going by. It's it's really nice. Yeah, I'd love to get up there. We drove up to Mount Rainier back in April when we were going to the Olympics. Just a quick day trip up to Mount Rainier, but I would love to get mm -hmm. over in this side and get to Bumping Lake in general. So there we go. Just yeah, to kind of check it out, give people a visual idea of that. Um, yeah, and again, like for people, like these sounds don't always happen when you go to Bumping Lake. So don't expect if you ever go there, don't expect there to get sounds all the time because it's it's not going to happen. 
But maybe yeah. you'll get lucky when you go there. You never know. But interesting. I just yeah, want to let people know: don't expect to get sounds every time you go there. For sure. Fruit Loops Film says the Zoom recorders have nice stereo condenser mics. I've used them to record quality music tracks. Yeah, really, really good. So definitely recommend them. And so, how would they hold up if if I if I were to leave them out? Well, you mean the recorders? For most audio recorders, I mean, I I even left these things out when it started to rain, and they were fine. Yeah. I wouldn't re necessarily recommend doing that, but I I wouldn't do it in the snow. To be honest with you, I wouldn't leave them out in the snow. If it's a cold temperature, I might turn them off. I've had a lot of recorders um get turned off probably because of the temperature. So don't let it. That's my personal opinion. I wouldn't leave them out if it's really cold or if you got snow um going on. But you know, in July, of course, like July was fine for this and. Yeah, and rain, you know, rain's fine. It's just, like I mentioned, like I keep my stuff in um, Ziploc bags. Yeah. So I yeah. recommend that for people if they want to use a recorder, um, put them in yeah. Ziploc bags. That way you don't get, you know, moisture and rain in them. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, and again, I, I'm not hoaxing this. <laughs> this is all I recorded on this recorder. So uh, I'm just, yeah, happy to share it for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 really interesting. It's good to talk about it as openly and yeah. obviously, you know, a lot of people probably claim, oh, this is one hundred percent, you know, Sasquatch audio or something when no, unless you physically it. saw them doing that, I mean it's right. very difficult to make that conclusion. I'll tell you, I wish I could have if I knew where these things were making those sounds, I wish I could have seen them do it, but you know, I don't want to get out of my tent. I don't want to get out of my tent at two AM, especially if there was something outside my tent. I didn't think i want to do that so uh, i mean i think about this a lot because it's i always hear this comment people saying oh you know i would have gotten out i would have done something and i mean there's been times where i've had some creature walking around camp you know likely a bear or something like that i've had moose sure. and stuff run past my tent i didn't really have the the, the motivation even armed to to want to confront whatever was out there it's tough in the moment i mean when you're out there your instincts kind of take over. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've heard that time and time again from researchers and people that have had a face to face or something like that with other animals, let alone something like a Sasquatch that isn't supposed to exist. Right. Right. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really. Yeah. So I didn't, I really didn't want to get on my tent. And uh, cause again, like I was hearing stuff outside my tent and I didn't want to go look. So, and also I was kind of in the moment too, to be honest, like I just want to sit there and listen to this stuff. So sure. Yeah. And also, Man. I do want to say, like, this recorder was not the only recorder running. I did have one of these guys running at the same time, mm -hmm. but they didn't, the sounds don't come as clear on these because there's like a lot of noise and stuff. But uh, right on. There was, a, there was a backup recorder going on at the same time. It's just these were the ones that were, you know, the more showcase. Sure. So that's, yeah. That's why I use that, obviously, for the show. So. It's yeah. interesting, man. It really is. I mean, it is. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what it is. If it's a Sasquatch, um, that's pretty crazy that they're that that they're that brave to do something like that. You know. Yeah, it's definitely a something little... so elusive. This is crazy to me. But yeah, which again, if it's people too, it's just so bizarre. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's entirely possible that very people bizarre. would do something like that. Yeah. Very but just that it, it's strange. I mean, I don't know what would motivate someone to do that. Yeah. For for what end? I mean, if it was some big celebration going on there, lots of people may, you know, like right. Like, what the heck is going on out there? Yeah. I, I'm at a loss for words. So again, we'll we'll let it we'll let it kind of sit with people and yeah. feel free to guys go back and re-listen to that audio we've played it twice so you can hear it and draw your own conclusions do your own yeah, research your own not trying to fill your head with ideas at all or nope. tell you what it is or isn't it's just downright weird whatever it is i think we can all agree on that um something bizarre and obviously we've had um some people that have looked at it as well that thought it was pretty strange um so yeah. i don't know I don't know what, what else to – what continues, right? What, yeah, right. In that area, I mean, obviously, I'm sure we'll probably continue to attract more Bigfooters, and now especially probably a lot of people in this chat yeah, are probably, probably – if they're in that area, go ahead. But, uh, you know, that as I said, that area has definitely been known for a while for in Bigfooting circles, and uh, it's not the first stuff I've heard from from that area. So, Yeah, absolutely. It's so interesting. Who knows, man? Hopefully we can get something better than that these coming years hopefully well, who knows yeah it's really bizarre brent i yeah brent was saying bizarre. tate was saying he hopes his next documentary will be there 
He's trying to get out to bumping. Yeah, I think he said my yeah, like I, I think you guys definitely should check it out. I mean, even the footprints possibly that are on the beach there, check, check that out. So um, it's a very interesting place. And who knows, you maybe you'll get something on audio. I, I don't know. It's I know I'm hoping maybe you'll get something in camp, like what happened, with, you know, when um when Kevin was there. So I don't know. You never know, man. Anything can happen at that place. It's right. It's, right. it's what's really kind of neat about it is like expect the unexpected there so yeah absolutely kevin says this is a very cool episode love these multimedia shows thank you for sharing your recordings tristan yeah you guys are welcome yeah i'm happy to share them yeah i'm glad you guys enjoyed them and thank you for the questions and comments and again i'm not claiming this to be anything i have no idea um is yeah, it possibly so it, sasquatch possible but i'm not gonna say it's a sasquatch i'm not gonna claim it to be so you guys if you guys think it's coyote yeah that's fine I don't know. Yeah, if anyone has any anyone has any uh, follow ups to this or ha does any research afterwards, don't yeah. hesitate to send me a message. Leave a comment. I'll try to put you in touch with Tristan. Or I'll let him know um, that you've commented. I mean, I'm sure he could check the YouTube comments too. That's probably the easiest yeah. way. But uh, if you find any research, you have any similar comparisons or anything like that, just let us know. I'd be really curious to know. I'm sure Tristan would like to know. Um, Absolutely. Because th this is the kind of stuff that keeps me going. You know, it's. Because there's a possibility there, right? Even if uh, it's not Sasquatch, I mean, it's still very, very intriguing. I mean, it, it leaves you really scratching your head and wondering what, what the heck it is. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. If it's not Sasquatch, what is it? Dog man, like somebody said? <laughs> is it some kind of weird um, cult going on? Yes. Right. It's a I mean, what's the, what's the weirder explanation, out? right? Is Bigfoot is the weirdest thing? Going on? I have no <laughs> idea what's up, man. Is Bigfoot the weirdest thing out there, or is there other weird stuff for sure? Right. Is Bigfoot the only thing? Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying, you know, it's what's what's the more unbelievable explanation that it's some kind of creature like Bigfoot or some kind of crazy weird cult or something? I I, I don't know what's more bizarre or what's more believable, honestly. I don't know either. Just That's all question, very man. very strange. Um, Joe says, "Keep searching, keep recording." Well, do yeah, I love recording, man. Like again, if you can't get anything on video, I think getting audio is the next best thing and you know because you get a lot of weird sounds so yeah audio is i mean it's so easy you can run audio people can do um uh long-term audio you can mm -hmm. do just set up stuff uh, even when you're camping i think it's i always like to run audio even though it's sometimes a pain to go through and listen to this stuff i mean if yes. you don't hear anything happening sometimes you have stuff happen when you don't when you're sleeping you have no idea i've had that happen yep. and gotten some pretty interesting audio that was just while i'm sleeping you know which means yep. that there was something hanging around my camp. What it was, I don't know. I mean, there's animals that come through. There's uh, other things that could be around your campsite, but definitely Absolutely. some weird stuff. Kevin says, yeah. very cool interview, guys. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for showing up, Kevin. Thanks for commenting, man. Good, good to hear from you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, should we start wrapping it up? What do you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing this audio, um, Alex. I appreciate it. No, absolutely. I think it's just, it's interesting to, uh, you know, just let people make up their own minds, yeah. listen to it. You have two, two chances. And I, I think what I can do, well, I think people should listen to the whole thing. Honestly, if you have the chance, if you're listening to this afterwards, I was going to say, I would, I would put in the timestamps for when those audio segments uh, were, yeah. mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll do that for the first one. But then if you guys want to hear both before and after how we preface the recordings or whatever, um, I think, I think, uh, you know, just hearing that full story is important to whatever's going on and, yeah. and know, know that the claims are being, the claims are being made. So, uh, you yeah. know, as we explain, you know, that Tristan has clearly said, he doesn't think, you know, it might be Sasquatch might not be, he's not saying definitively. Right. So like, um, your, like what your question is, Bigfoot audio. That's a good question. That's exactly it. I mean, obviously it's a little bit of a title to catch people's attention. I mean, right. that's just the way it is, but I, you can hear our discussion. We're pretty open to a lot of different possibilities and everyone has, I think there's been a lot of great comments that have brought up some um, very good points. You're know, asking about what was the weather like? What was the moon cycle? What was very going good. on? You know, could it be Kayo? It's this kind of stuff. I think it's important to ask those questions because mm -hmm. you can't, you can't accept everything at face value. I mean, I don't, I wasn't there with you, you know, I only yeah. know you virtually. So yeah. I, I don't, I don't know you. So obviously I'm kind of going through a process of myself as well. And, all the listeners are as well. So as long as we can keep developing those skills and, you know, critical thinking and being able to, uh, you know, not just accept everything that's told to us uh, and do your own research. Like I said, guys, yeah, go, absolutely. go compare to other animal sounds after this, do what you got to do. But um, 
I think Tristan to me has satisfied in the sense that he has, you know, been very open about what's been going on. Um, yeah. And, you know, he's, he's not afraid to take a hard question or two. Yeah. From what and I'm I, saying. I let you listen. I let you listen to that 30 minutes if you wanted to. So it's not like I'm yeah. hiding anything. No, absolutely. No. And, and, and so that's, that's exactly what I, yeah. what I mean for sure. You're very open about, uh, about that. But those details about like the moon and thing, I think that is important because maybe they'll give you an indication of when something might like this can happen. So any kind yeah. of detail like that is maybe there's like too. external factors or you know something like that. Yeah. It's it's definitely definitely important. I mean, it's just and as I said, now that we can re we record that data, you can basically you know there's been times in the past where people have made claims that about weather cycles and moon and stuff like that. Turns out it wasn't the case. Right. Um, so I think it's important to. Uh, you know, even if you don't know that stuff, you know, you clearly you can look it up now. So yeah, good stuff. Well, again, man, thanks for coming on. Uh, awesome thank having you. you on again. It was yeah. a great discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Right. I'm really happy to share anything I have, you know, it's for sure. We'll yeah. have to do it again sometime. Um, if you get anything else, or I know we had some other stuff we were going to listen to, but I think we can save that for, for maybe another time as well. So sure. Yeah, I know this was a big one. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it, it's just focusing on this audio, I think, was pretty, pretty cool. It gives people the full story and then they can listen to it whenever they want. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's all there. So and I obviously appreciate you sharing that and yeah, willingness welcome. to discuss it. So totally yeah. welcome. Mm -hmm. welcome man. right on, guys. Well, thank you guys, everyone in the comments. Um, awesome questions comments all that kind of stuff hopefully you guys enjoyed it it was definitely interesting for me i always learn something new doing these kinds of shows uh, as i mentioned earlier in the show next week we're going to be having on scott of the bigfoot mapping project uh, if you guys like that little google earth segment we did there i think okay. you're going to really like next week's show because uh, i've i've done you know some of our beyond the trail stuff i've consulted with scott and I, he, he's a guy that works professionally with mapping software and data he knows what he's doing i've shown you tristan some of the stuff too oh, yeah yeah that was uh, i think awesome. last time we were talking yeah i was showing you on the map that he, he made us a custom map for some of our florida stuff over that was a real eye opener yeah so a that's what i mean and scott's great like his website's free you can go check it out he also has an app on his phone it's like a couple bucks i absolutely recommend getting it and we'll talk more about that next week on the show when i have him on and he'll uh, bring us right. a lot of that data and kind of how to use it. And I think, you know, parallels with known animals that we can use in terms of dating, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, data collection with Bigfoot settings. So, uh, but that's a story for, for next week's show. So again, thank you for coming on, Tristan. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. It was great. And thank you everybody uh, for tuning in. And again, this has been Sasquatch out of the shadows live. We'll see you guys next week. I hope everyone has a great rest of your week. Take it easy, everyone.